Hi there. Here we are now in our new topic, which is now multiplication and division of integers. Okay, there you go. So uh, this is the continuation of our operations of integers. We are done with the addition and subtraction already. So now we have this multiplication of division and division of integers. Um, we will now we will now learn how to multiply and divide integers. So um, for multiplication, we will consider again two cases similarly to our to our addition, which is two cases. Um, anyways, we call the two integers that we multiply as factors. Okay, the answer we call as the product. So for the case one, both factors have the same sign. So that is, they are both positive or both negative. So in this case, we will normally multiply the integers and then the sign of the product is always going to be positive. Okay, so if they have the same signs, they're both positive or they're both negative. If you're multiplying them, the product is always positive, for example. So this is a very trivial one. 3 times 4 is going to be um, equal to 12. But there are lots of ways of writing them. Um, like I said before, this is not the conventional way of writing multiplication. It is in arithmetic, but when you enter algebra, um, you should get away from this symbol. Um, this can be misinterpreted sometimes when you write on a piece of paper. This can be written as 3x4 or viewed as 3x4. It depends on your handwriting. So in just in order to delete the the you know the hand the handwriting questions and then others we usually use the raised dot three times four and seldom you know when we write the raised dot we put it a little bit way below the number in such a way that it will look like a decimal sign or decimal uh, a dot period so we have we can also use the parentheses to aid us so this is the safest way but you know it takes up a lot of time on writing but anyways, it's still multiplication. So this is read as 3 times 4, 3 times 4, 3 times 4. The answer is 12, as we know. They're both positive, so their product is always positive. For both negative, so 5 times 4, negative 5 times negative 4, it's going to be positive 20. Okay, positive 20. Okay, so that's for our case number 1. So let's have our worksheet here. Go ahead, pause, and then try to answer. We're going to answer this immediately then then after. Okay, so for number one, um, for your answer in your worksheet, so for number one, um, four times seven, what is four times seven? They're both positive, so the product is positive. Four times seven is 28. Okay, check if you're correct. Number two, negative six times negative three, the answer is six times three is 18. They're both negative, so it's going to be positive 18. Um, 21 times 11, multiply those, so they're both positive, the product is also positive, that's 231. Number 4, they're both negative, negative 5 times negative 15, the answer is going to be positive, 75. And then lastly, for, my, for number 5, minus 10 times minus 15, the answer is, they're both negative, so the answer is 150. Okay, so hopefully you get a score of 3 and up. That'll be okay. That'll be good. Okay, so remember in our multiplication, we have, we are considering two cases. So this is now our case number two, where in the case number two tells us that the factors, what if the factors have different signs? That is, one is positive and the other one is negative. So what shall we do? Um, opposite to the case number one, wherein the product is always positive, in this case, the product is always negative. Okay, that's the only one which is different from the case number one. So for example, um, if we have negative three times four, we have also different ways of writing this. It's equal to negative three times four. It has the raised dot being used. It has the parenthesis being used, this one. So quantity negative three times quantity four, it's still the same, it's multiplication. And since one is negative, one is positive, the answer here is negative. 12. Okay, likewise, when we have 5 times negative 4, um, they have different signs. So we know 5 times 4 is 20, so we have negative 20. Okay, so that's how we do multiplication in case number 2. Next up, we have this worksheet. Um, again, uh, go ahead and pause and then we'll try to play.
if you're done. Okay. Okay, I think that'll be enough. You can play. Um, we'll answer the worksheet number one, or rather, worksheet in multiplication two. So for number one, we have four times negative twelve. So negative and positive, so the product is going to be negative. So four times negative twelve, negative, uh, rather four, twelve times four is forty-eight. So since it's case number two, it's going to be negative forty-eight. Um, negative six times eleven, so that's um, 11 six times um, that's case 2 they have different signs so we have negative 66 number 3 negative 5 times 15 1 is positive 1 is negative 3 15s is 45 put the negative sign there that's your answer number 4 um, negative 5 times 9 they have different signs um, 9 fives is 45 that's going to be negative 45 and number 10 is 10 times negative 15. They have different signs. This is negative, this is positive. So we have negative 150. Okay, so that ends our multiplication. We will go now for the division of integers. So this is the last of the operations that we're going to talk about. We will follow actually the same exact cases in multiplying numbers or multiplying integers. Um, we have also two cases. We're in um, very similar to the multiplication in case one. Both dividend and divisor have the same sign. If that's the case, um, say you ha they, ha they are both positive or both negative, what shall we do? We will normally divide the integers and the sign of the quotient is always positive. By the way, um, we will call their result as the quotient. Okay. Case number two, the dividend and the, and the divisor have different signs, so that is one is positive or the other one is and the other one is negative or vice versa. Um, the answer or the quotient is always going to be negative. Okay, so that is our case one and two, very similar to the case one and two in multiplication. So for example, say we have negative fifteen divided by three. So this is our our con our arithmetic way, shall we say, of writing the division sign. So this sign is called the obelius. So we have negative 15 divided by 3. It can also be written as this. It depends on the te textbooks. But textbooks often use this division sign. Um, but the most um, conventional way of writing it is using the fraction bar. Okay, negative 15 divided by 3. So this is the most um, unambiguous way to write division. So when we perform it, negative 15 over 3, what's the answer? How many 3s are there in 15? So that's going to be 5. And since this is case 2, this one is negative, this one is positive down below. So it's case 2, the sign of the quotient is negative. So it's going to be negative 5. For another example, we have negative 27 divided by negative 3. Um, they're both negative, that's case 1. What is 27 divided by 3? The answer is 9, so that's going to be positive 9. Okay, that's it for our division. Um, before we end, this will be our last worksheet for this video. Um, go ahead and pause and then play. Okay, I think that'll be it. Um, for your number one, 24 divided by negative 3. 24 divided by negative 3. So this is clearly case 2, wherein they have different signs. So 24 divided by 3 is, what's the number? Okay, the answer is 8, since there are 8 threes in 24. So the answer is 8, and since it's case 2, it's going to be negative 8. Okay, so that's the answer. Number 2, we have negative 60 divided by negative 12. So this is case 1, since they have, they have the same sign. So, what is 60 divided by 12? That's 5. Very good. Okay, number 3. 15 divided by negative 9. Okay, 15 divided by negative 9. So, this is clearly case 2, wherein they have different signs. Um, here, it is positive. Here, it is negative. Um, there's no correct answer, or there's no integer answer, inter integer solution in this number 3. But what we can do is just simplify the numerator and the denominator. So their common factor is 3. So 15 divided by 3 is going to give us um, 5. And 9 divided by 3 is going to give us 3. And then since it's case 2, the answer is negative 5 over 3. 
And lastly, for number 4, we have negative 51 divided by 17. So it's case 2 since 1 is negative, the numerator is negative, the denominator is positive. So that's case 2. The, the quotient is always or is going to be negative, we know. What is 51 divided by 17? Actually, the answer is 3. So the, it is negative 3 as our final result. Um, more often than not, 51 is thought to be a prime number. Okay, a prime number is a number where it, there, its only factors is 1 in itself. But um, a special case is 51, it is a factor of 17. So they take note of that. Don't count it as, as a prime number when you count prime numbers. Okay, so as a summary, in this lecture, we have learned, number one, multiplication of integers, and then we have learned also the division of integers, which completes our operations of integers. Um, if you're having some troubles in these topics, you all you need to do is just go back and watch, rewatch it over and over again so that you will gain mastery. Okay, again, um, for us to be better equipped for the advanced lesson, you need to master the the four types of operations in algebra again addition subtraction multiplication and division okay so thank you very much see you in the next video bye